But in Revelation chapter number 1, uh, Paul is on the Isle of Patmos and he is given a vision. And I'm going to begin reading with verse number 9. We'll have a word of prayer and we'll go along as the Lord will let us. Uh, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He had been banished for his testimony. He had been banished for his faith, for his belief, and for his proclamation of the word of God. You say, that was terrible days, preacher. That was a terrible time. But I'm telling you, we're facing those same things here in America. Uh, we're facing these same things in our nation and worse uh, because of the testimony of the word of God. And we should be strong uh, for our faith. We should be strong for our beliefs. And we should be strong witnesses in this world today. John go, uh, jo goes on to say, uh, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia and unto Ephesus and into Smyrna, and into Pergamos, and into Thyatira, and into Sardis, and into Philadelphia, and into La and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about with paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Now, John saw this. He saw this vision given to him. He saw the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw him. And uh, he, it was all in a vision. And John was carried away into that vision. And when he saw him, he said he fell at his feet. Friend, there's coming a day when you and I will fall at the feet of Jesus. Amen. There's coming a day when we'll be before this same Jesus that John stood before and that he uh, saw him. He witnessed that in a vision with his own eyes and he fell at his feet. He fell there to worship him. And Jesus said to him here, he said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray, help us to rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, forgive us of sin and failure. God, we pray. I pray for those that have gathered in the building today. God, we pray that you'd help every one of us. God, as we leave here, God, we'll be more encouraged in the things of God. Lord, if there's a lost one in our midst today, God, please, I pray in Jesus' name, may they get right with thee today and repent and be saved before it's too late. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, I want to go back to that last, uh, uh, last couple of verses we read to you. When Verse number 17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet <coughs> as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Now, John fell, and he fell at his feet in fear. And Jesus, standing before him, laid his hand upon him, and said, Fear not, I am, fear not, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. So he put upon him his hand, he said, Fear not, I'm the first and the last, I've got the keys to death and hell, and he reassured John that he was all, I believe he was telling John, John, I'm all you'll ever need, I'm all you'll ever desire, I'm everything that the world will ever want. I'm everything that the world will ever need. If they'll just accept me, I'm everything. Amen. And friend, we live in this world today when Jesus still is everything. He's all that I need. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's God. Amen. 
And this word, these two words that I've been thinking about most of the week are those words, fear not. Fear not. Now, uh, there's a lot in this world to be to make us fear. I, you know, one eye and half sin, the preacher used to tell me, if you've got one eye and half sin, you can look around and you can acknowledge that this is a fearful world that we're living in. I mean, that you, you look around, what's the good news? Except the Lord Jesus saves lost sinners. You look in the world, you don't hear that. But look at whatever good news you can find in the, in the news media today, and there's just not much of it. And it's all, uh, you know, I believe all of it is part of a ploy of the devil himself to try to make everyone live in fear. Now, friend, I'm just not going to live that way, amen? I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to live worried and afraid of what's going on because I know that in my heart there lives a person called Jesus Christ and he says, fear not, amen. Now, you may be here today and you may be worried about all that's going on in the world. You may be, how many of you is worried about politics? Anybody? I'm not the least bit worried about politics. Amen. I can't do nothing about it. I vote. When I get a chance to vote, I vote. And friend, the, the, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a point right there where I could start out at, but there's so much junk going on in the world of politics. Just It's all to the dogs. Amen. But I've got one living inside of me that does not depend on political uh, persuasion, does, is not politically correct, and does not, does not care for all what man thinks about politics, but he loves the soul of a lost man. His name's Jesus. And friend, I'm telling you what, he supersedes all the politicians. Amen. He supersedes all the problems of the world. His name is Jesus. Amen. And Jesus says here to John, he says, fear not. And I began to look back through the scripture and to find those words, fear not. And if you'll take those two words, fear not, and look them up 62 times, you'll find them in the Word of God. And the majority of those are telling us and, and giving us encouragement that we should fear not. Now, sometimes it's talking to uh, Old Testament saints and maybe a situation that they're in. But still, friend, today the Bible clearly tells us as believers that we are to fear not. Amen. Now, the propagandist, is that the way you say that? Anyway, there's much propaganda, I'll put it that way, in the world today about all that is wont to be done with Christian people. Now, I believe a lot of that to be true. I'm just going to tell you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand up here and paint your rosy picture. But I believe we as God's people, if something doesn't change in our very country, we're headed for times that are going to be more fearful than they ever have been before for the child of God. Now, I'm not here this morning trying to frighten you. I'm here trying to tell you that we need to be aware and we need to be on guard of the devil and his plans and his, his uh, ploys that to, to make us fall into fear. Now you stop and think just a moment what all is going on in the world today that if God wasn't with you, you'd be terribly afraid of. I'm glad I've got the Lord. Amen. We're living in the last days of time. We're living in the days just before Jesus is going to step out on a cloud and call the bride home to be with him. We're living in those days. We're here, friend. We're now. We're here when Jesus is coming. And you think the devil likes it one minute knowing his time, or maybe not, but if he knows his time is running out, do you think one minute he likes for us to live in joy, in happiness, in peace, in a world that's full of terror, in a world that's full of sin, in a world that's full of sorrow? Do you think for one minute the devil likes for you to be happy? No, he does not. I'm telling you, that even, even things such as the uh, fall fellowship we had around here, yes, the devil does not like that at all. Why? Because it gives somebody the opportunity to come around church. Amen. It gives somebody opportunity that may not be, you know, I don't know who, but maybe someone was here that wasn't particularly happy with the way the things are going in the churches. And uh, may they not like, you know, church people, but they got around here if they did, and they come around here for a moment yesterday. They understand now that God's people, amen, love them, amen. 
We live in a disastrous world, but we live in a world where, friend, if you know the Lord, you've got everything you need to survive in this world that you live in. Fear not. Now, there are many negatives in this world today. I can paint you in all kinds of a, of a, 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 a negative world in what, that we live in today. The Bible says, fear not. Because we've got a great God. Amen? Y'all with me this morning? Look like about half asleep. Do I, maybe, maybe I ought to sit down and y'all ought to stand up. Amen? But listen, are we living in a day when the world is not a very negative world? But do we not have a great God? Hello? Do we not have a great God? There you go. Hey, I prod a little bit here in a minute, and I'll get some life out of this crowd today. We live with a God that is a great God. We love a God that is a great God. And that great God, if you're saved by God's grace, lives right here. Amen. He's in your heart this morning. And wherever you go, He goes. And why should you fear when you got the God of all glory living inside of you? Amen. Boy, that encouraged me right then. Let me say that again. Why should we fear when we've got the God of glory living inside of us? Amen. Who is what? The Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. And friend, everywhere He is, we are. And everywhere we are, He is. Amen. He's God. He's bigger than our fears. The Bible says fear not what you're afraid of. How many of you have fears here? Other than, I mean, just something you're afraid of. Sister Betsy, don't get started. She'll, she'll be all day if she starts telling us her fears. I have to pick on her. One thing, she's afraid I'm going to say something about her in church, so she's fearful of that. Now, yesterday I was around, I was around Sister Betsy, and I booed at her, and she didn't flinch. I said, see there, you're getting better. She didn't flinch a bit. When I, and most time I can walk up to her and just look at her and say, hey, Betsy. Hey, man, she's all to pieces. But we pick on her, amen, because we love her, amen. If we pick on you, it's because we love you. And if we don't pick on you, it don't mean we don't love you. We're just afraid to pick on you, afraid you'll pick back, amen. <laughs> but listen, everybody's got some kind of fear. You're afraid of something. Now, I'm not afraid of the dark, but I'm not real, real fond of it. I'm almost afraid of elevators. But I'm not walking over a grave, amen, if it has any age on it at all. I'll just tell you. <laughs> We've had this discussion before. It scares me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got chill bumps on me now just thinking about it. And I know there's not, I don't think there's anything down there that can hurt me. <laughs> but my fear is to walk over and fall it well I guess it would any kind of hole probably I walked over and fell in it terrified me but a grave is I'm you know you watch when I'm out in the woods I walk on very solid ground amen and if it looks like it might fall through I'm not going to go around it because I don't know what's down under there that's going to grab me by the foot <laughs> y'all laugh amen if you ever have this problem you won't laugh amen some of you got a very somber face, so I assume that you feel the same way that I do. But what is your fear? What, what do you fear in life? What is there something everybody's afraid of? Everybody's got a fear or a phobia or something going on. Well, friend, those things we can deal with pretty easy. I can deal with my fear of falling in an empty grave. Boy, is this going out on the, oh, my, I'll get laughed out of the country over this, Brother Frank. <laughs> Frank says we have no way of editing anything off. But if I, thank you. You got it, yeah. But, you know, I can avoid my fear of falling in a hole by just not going over something that looks unstable. Now, part of that may be because when I was a kid, I had a little pond out behind my house, and I say a very little pond. And when I was a kid, it would freeze over in the wintertime, and, and, me, and my, me and my neighbor up the road, me and him would get out on it, and we'd slip and slide around, not with ice skates or nothing like that. We didn't have them. We was barefoot or or slick shoes, and we get out and we'd slip around, you know where he's at, slip around that. One day I got too close to the edge, and guess what happened? I fell in, and guess what happened after that? Right back under the ice. That's why you don't ever, ever want to fall in a, in a well, it, you know, the pond wasn't about four foot deep, and I was about five foot, so all I had to do was stand up, and it broke the ice because it wasn't that big. 
But, but I was terrified after that. And so one thing, things I don't do is get on a lake with ice froze on it unless it's been about eight foot thick to avoid the fear. I don't walk out here in this graveyard. You watch me. If I walk in the graveyard, it's right beside those tombstones. And if they look old, I ain't going over there. It's a fear. It's, but I can, I can deal with those kind of fears because I know what to do. But you know this fear of the things going on in the world today? Friend, if it ain't God that helps me, if it ain't God that, that, that keeps me from those fears and helps me not to worry, I'll worry myself sick and I'll die of fear if I don't look to Jesus. Amen. Amen. No, I don't pray when I go through the graveyard. Lord, don't help me not to fall in one. I, you know, I just, just watch out. But this world is full of fears and whatever your fear is, you might be able to conquer that fear by the help of God and you might get over that I'll let you off the hook. I'm not going to go there. She just saw me. She knows what I was about to say. But listen, whatever it is, amen, when this world throws fear at you, you know that you've got God that will help you with your fears. Fear not because God is bigger than their fears. Fear not because God is bigger than their problems. Fear not because God is bigger than their worries. Now, friend, this thing of Ebola is getting out of hand, amen. I've heard all kinds of what will happen down the road if this keeps going on, if this, if this disease. Now, do I lay down at bed at night and say, Lord, help me not to get Ebola? I say, Lord, keep me safe. But I'm not going to worry about it, amen, until it gets a little closer home. Am I going to worry a whole lot about that? Now, I've heard all kinds of stories that it is, and some of them I wouldn't doubt it being an act of terrorism. Boy, that'll get out, and I'll be... I'll be nailed for that. But I've heard that. People say it's an act of terrorism by getting a, a, a virus into our, you know, that we don't know a whole lot about getting it in our, into our country that it might kill a bunch of us all. And it has like a 90% death rate. That's fearful, friend. That is something that we would naturally be afraid of. But am I going to let my world stop? And am I going to let my joy stop? And am I going to not be happy because of this? No, I'm, not. I'm going to go on for God. Amen. By the help of God, He's my friend. God loves me. God cares for me. God will protect me. And the Bible says, fear not. So we're not going to be afraid of it. Amen. Preacher, what if it comes to our town? We'll take all the necessary precautions that we need to take. But I'm telling you what, friend, this is all in the hands of a big God. Amen. You hear about all this, all the terror going on in the world. You hear about this Islamic state that has cropped up all over everywhere. And it's coming and it's taking over. And their desire is to take over the United States and hang their flag, flag on the White House. If they get what they want, that's exactly what they'll do. But I've got a God that's bigger than all of that. And it doesn't matter what happens, friend. I've got God. Amen. He's mine. Hallelujah. Christians by the millions are being terrorized around the world. They're being persecuted. They're being slaughtered. They're being beheaded. And friend, I'll tell you what, I'm glad I've got a big God. Amen. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fear. You say, well, you preacher, you can stay, say that because you live in America and there's no danger of it. I'm telling you, that's creeping in real quick. Out in Texas where that, where that lesbian mayor is is requiring that all the pastors in the area turn in their sermons uh, because to see if they're being discriminated against this, that, or the other. I'm telling you what, if they want to listen to my preaching, go to, w, go to gablescreekbc.com and listen to all you want to listen to. I don't have nothing to hide. Amen. Amen. And do you think for one minute, do you think for one minute that this preacher is going to hold back because of what somebody might do to him. Amen. Think again. I'm not. Amen. I'm not going to, to, to I'm by the help of God. Amen. I'm not going to let my sermons be determined by what man thinks, but what God thinks. Amen. Amen. By the help of God. Now this has been burdened on me heavy here lately because we don't listen, church. We need a strong church and we've got that. 
And we need, by the help of God, we need to cultivate the strength of Gabriel's Creek Baptist Church. And as I've said before, band together closer than we've ever been, be in fellowship with others, with each other uh, more than we've ever been, and, and not let the devil get in and sneak in because we're living in the last days. And I'll say it again, we need each other. Amen. We need each other. There's not a one of you in the building that I can do without, I promise you. And any other born-again believer that, 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 you know, that wants to worship and serve the Lord, I need you, friend. I need your prayers. And listen, if I get locked up in jail, amen, I'm going to need you to come and bail me out. Amen. And if they won't let you bail me out, then I want you to pray for me that God will help me to be what I am in jail as I am out on the street. Amen. God help us. We live in a world that's a world full of fear, but God says, fear not. 2 Kings chapter number 6 and verse number 16. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Amen, amen. The world says we've got a crowd. The world of terror says we've got a crowd that's going to take over the wicked politicians say we're going to control the world. We're going to, con listen, greater is that, that's, got, that that's with me than that that's with them. That's what it says. Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Amen. We're, we got the minority, friend, even, or the majority, even though it seems in the world we are the minority. Because of God, we're the majority. Amen. Fear not because, number two, fear not because God is always there. He's always there. Think about it. He's always there. Always. No matter what you're facing, God's there. No matter where you're at, God's there. He's always there. Deuteronomy 31 and verse number 8. And the Lord, he it is, that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. You say, that's Old Testament. The amen, very applicable to us today, though. Fear not. Fear not. Why? Because he will be with thee. Fear not. Why? Because he will not fail you. He will not fail me. Fear not. Why? Because he will not forsake us. He will not turn and leave us to the enemy. He will not turn and leave us to this world. But friend, if we'll stay close to him and follow him, he will lead us in the battle. He will lead us through the battle. And he will give us victory over the battle. Amen. Why? Because he's God. And we need not fear because he's always, every day, every minute, every moment, even when I don't feel like it, God's right there. Amen. I was having a pretty rough time this morning over over nothing that anybody could do anything about except me and my brain. But guess what? Even when I was having a rough time, God's there. Amen? The old devil pokes and he prods and, and uh, he tried to disrupt me this morning. I thought, I was on my way to church and I thought, you know, I'm, I'm hungry. I would ate breakfast, but it wasn't what I normally eat. And I was, I was hungry. And, my, and, it, and used to, I didn't eat a thing before I preached. But now if I don't eat, I get faint. The Bible don't want me to be faint. The Bible says, you know, not. But anyway, I thought, well, I'll run through Bojangles, Bohongolis, that French restaurant. You know that French restaurant, Bohongolis? And so I, I'm going to go through the drive through Well, most of the time there's a line of cars there, but today they're what? And I said, well, I'll just go through the drive through instead of going inside. So I got behind the car, and I'm sitting there, and I can't get out now. See, I thought, well, I'll just go on because it's going, well, I can't get out. They pull up this close, and I can't get out. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to sit here. And I sat there about five minutes. I thought, oh, Lord, I'm going to be late. I, I was, had a little time, but now I'm not going to have enough time. And somebody had ordered a bunch of stuff, but they should have went inside and got it here, there, and yonder. That all is. And I got out of there, and I got, and I didn't get what I wanted. Well, I get all over that, and, 
And I get on to church, and there's just something. There's just something with me. And I, I didn't. I wasn't about five minutes late. I just went on downstairs because there's something bothering me. And I don't know what it is. Anybody else like that? Amen. Raise your hand. Anybody? Nobody else ever get like that. My wife says, "What's bothering you? Nothing. Nothing that I know of." I ask my wife once in a while. She gets real quiet. But that's rare, but she does. Now I'm going to get the silent treatment, but I, I listen, I pay for all this afterwards. Amen. Y'all get the joke, but, but my sweet, dear, lovable, loving wife that I love so much, <laughs> she gets quiet once in a while, and I say, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with a lot of people I found out. But there's just something you can't put your finger on. And I don't know, I, I, most of the time I just... I just give it, you know, I just say, well, it, it's the devil trying to do something, trying to f defeat me or trying to cause me not to have some victory. But then I read the Bible, and it says, fear not. Amen. I read the Word of God, and it tells me to fear not because God's there. Amen. He said, I will not leave you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. Even though when sometimes I think he has, guess what? He's not because the Bible tells me he's not. He's always there. He ain't going to forsake me. Sister, he ain't going to forsake you. Brother, never will Jesus forsake you. He's always right there. Amen. He'll be with you. He'll be with that boy. He'll be with you. He'll be with you and those grandchildren. God's there. He will not forsake his people. Amen. Children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. They wandered there because of, of sin and because of unbelief. But guess what was there all the time with them? It was God. He said, I will not fail thee, neither will I forsake thee. He cares. He said, I'll not forsake you. I'll always care for you. No matter what everybody else may do, I will always care, and I will not forsake you. First Peter 5 and 7 tells us that we are to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. He cares for you, friend. And when we think that he's forsaken us, fear not, he has not. When we think that, he's, that all the troubles of the world are upon us, what are we to do? Fear not, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Amen. He cares, friend. Fear not, God cares. And then he loves you when nobody else seems to love you. How many people ever felt like nobody loves you? Nobody cares a thing about you. Nobody loves you. Anybody? Sure. All over the place. Some people, yeah, nobody loves me. Yeah, God loves you. And it matters down here in this life whether people like you or where you, where you say it does not. It does matter if people like you or people don't like you. Somebody don't like me, it bothers me. But a lot of that has to depend on who it is. I'm serious. The lost man ain't going to like me a whole lot. I don't, I don't like it that the lost man don't like me a whole lot. But I'm going to tell the truth to the lost and dying world. But listen, if you think the whole world's against you, and if you think that nobody loves you, if you're having your little pity party with you and the flesh and the devil, if you're having your little pity party, which we all do sometimes, or maybe it's not a pity party. Maybe you're just believing that, look, God, I've done all of this, that, and the other. Nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to love me. Remember, God in heaven loves you. Amen. Fear not. God still loves you. If you're the last one standing, remember, God loves you. I think about some of the martyrs uh, that happened in the Old Testament and some of those that I read in the Fox's Book of Martyrs. And I think of some of those people, how that they must have stood there as they were as they were tied to the, to the uh, stake and were being burned at the stake, and I began to wonder, wonder if they ever felt like nobody cared about them while they were being there burned at the stake. I'm sure they did, but guess what? God loved them. And no doubt the sweet spirit of God spoke to them and said, Fear not, you'll be home in a little bit. Hey, man. Friend, I'm telling you, this world we live in, if we get to feeling like nobody cares for us and nobody loves us, guess what, friend? You look around and there's plenty of people around that love you. Amen. And because the devil says they don't, don't mean they don't. Amen. God, the children of God love you. The children of God love me. If you're saved, you got to. Amen. You have to. Preacher, I don't like you very much right well, but you got to love me. 
You have to. <laughs> I don't have to like you. Nobody's got to love me. Why? Because I'm your brother, amen, in Christ. You're my brother in Christ. You're my sister in Christ. And we must love one another. And friend, I'm telling you, if it all seems that we're forsaken of others, God loves you. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. Fear not. God loves you. He loves us when no one else does. If you're saved here today, the last one, or pretty close. The last one here today, or pretty close. Fear not. If you're a child of God, fear not. You're in the place of God. Now, I read this scripture. I read this scripture, and it's a good thing I wasn't driving, because I'd probably read it. The Lord knew that. Genesis 50 and verse number 19, And Joseph said unto them, Fear not. For am I in the place of God? Joseph was in the place of God. If you're a child of God, you're in the place of God. You, I mean, you're in the place. You're exactly what God had intended for your life if you're saved by the grace of God. Now, you might not be doing everything God wants you to do. But if you're saved by the grace of God, you're in the place of God. I'm saved by God's grace. I'm in the place of God. Amen. I'm where God wants me to be as far as eternity goes. And God help me to be in the place of God when it comes to service. Are you in the place of God when it comes to service? Are you what God wants you to be? And can you lay down in bed every night and lay down on your pillow every night and say, Lord, I've done everything you wanted me to do today. I have to, I have to say, Lord, help me. But I want to be in the place of God where that all that I do is to God's glory. I leave here. I leave here after preaching. I said, Lord, can I get you amen? God, did I do right? Most of the time, the Lord says, Amen. Now, once in a while, on occasion, God said, You know, you messed that up. I said, Yes, Lord, it is me. It wasn't you. But I love being in the place of God. Amen. I love being in the face of the place of God. And fear not if you're in the place of God. Now, if you're lost without God, you're not in the place of God. You're lost and you're on your way to hell and nothing to help you except be born again. This message means nothing to you. And I hope if you're lost, I hope you're here and you're lost today. I'm hoping that you're fearful of your eternal destiny because it's one where you'll spend eternity in the lake of fire. But if you're in the place of God, amen, fear not. And then last of all, sure enough, fear not because help's on the way. Fear not because help is on the way. He is our help. Isaiah 41, 13, For I... The Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, I will help thee. My friend today, God you help. And fear not, you've got, listen, going through this world, whatever struggles and hardships and heartaches you may face, man, I'm glad the Bible says fear not, he's my help. I can call upon him. And when I call upon him, friend, help is on the way. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your grace. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this message. God, we understand. God, how this life we face problems, worries, discouragements, fearful things. God, we're glad for the word of God that says fear not. And God, help us in Jesus' name, Father, to live in victory and not in fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.